Hello, my name is Melanie Gibson and I'm an alumna of St Anne's College where I matriculated in 1978. I studied Arabic for my BA and in the course of my degree I fell in love with the culture of the Islamic world and most of all with its art. I had the great good fortune to be let loose in the stores of the Ashmolean Museum for one term under the brilliant guidance of Professor James Allen who taught me a great deal about ceramics. Countries in the Middle East have produced high quality glazed ceramics since at least the 9th century in Iraq, Iran, Syria and Egypt and I was handling and learning about the way these were made and decorated. When I left Oxford I had no doubt that this was the area in which I wanted to have a career. After a few false starts I ended up at SOAS London University where I broadened my knowledge of the field by doing an MA and then later a PhD. I then started lecturing for the postgraduate diploma in Asian art at SOAS and eventually went on to run the module on the art of the Islamic world for very many years. I was lecturing on all aspects of ceramics and glass and that is how I ended up becoming a trustee of Leighton House in London which has a superb collection of Syrian and Turkish tiles attached to the walls of the Arab Hall. Leighton House was built by Frederick Leighton, who you see here on the left, looking rather debonair. He was a painter, a sculptor and a collector who became president of the Royal Academy in 1878. Like several of his contemporaries, he wanted to build himself a studio house. And in 1864, he did. He built the house that you see here on the right with his friend and longtime collabor collaborator, George Aitchison. Um, in 1877, he added to his house, he added the extension that you see here on the right of the picture, which is known as the Arab Hall. It's a rather um, spectacular octagonal room on the west end of a otherwise fairly conventional artist's house. My research project um, at the moment is an investigation of how the Arab Hall came about, how Frederick Leighton acquired, designed and put together the components that you see in this spectacular room, which I'm going to talk about for a moment now. Unusually, Leighton loved travelling in the Middle East, where he first went as a young man aged 27, um, having made a great deal of money from the sale of his first picture to Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. And over 10 years before becoming the president of the Royal Academy, he went off on long trips every autumn, to many times to Europe, but also to Turkey, to Egypt and to Syria. And wherever he travelled, he made sketches, he painted watercolours and most of all, he collected art, but also ideas. And it was these ideas that he would eventually it would eventually inspire him to create his Arab Hall. And when I started this project, what I wanted to do was to try and put myself in his shoes to try and get a sense of what he was seeing. So I started looking at photographs um, of the period when he was traveling. Um, and I looked, for instance, at this in the top left, there's a, that's a photograph of the great Suleiman Mosque in Istanbul. And the, the windows around the dome was something that he recreated in the Arab Hall. And this is Cairo, this is a street in Cairo in the top right, um, with projecting wooden balconies with um, screens on them, known as mashrabiya. And at the bottom is a painting that Leighton himself made um, of a house he visited um, in Damascus and the striped masonry was something that inspired him. So this is how I went about trying to find, trying to seek his inspiration, trying to sort of step into his, insp his inspiration. So here we are back in the Arab Hall um, and I think just my few words just now will sh have shown you that the inspiration for the Arab Hall came from the reception rooms that Leighton saw in Cairo and Damascus. You can see the fountain in the centre, there's a high dome above it, um, the divans in the windows with the wooden trellises and the tiles, the tiles that come from Syria and Turkey, all in exquisite shades of blues, greens and um, purples um, and which are all different but which were exquisitely rearranged to make them look as if they were always supposed to fit together. And of course, he didn't do this alone. He did it with his architect, George Aitchison, who I mentioned, but also he worked with a ceramicist called William de Morgan, 
who helped him to restore the tiles, repair the broken ones and to apply them and also design new tiles for the next room in the house, which is called the Narcissus Hall. Um, Walter Crane was responsible for the gold mosaic above the tiles, which he designed inspired by um, a palace in Palermo called La Ziza, and many others were involved as well. Leighton used the room to entertain his friends and colleagues, I mean, very much as a smoking room. Um, and there's at least one um, report of one of his friends uh, falling into the, um, into the fountain in the centre, having had a drink or two too many. Leighton described the house as a little addition for the sake of something beautiful to look at once in a while. But I think you'll agree with me that it's a whole lot more than that. It's a truly spectacular room and one that we're very lucky that has survived. Leighton died in 1896 and the house was in fact left to his sisters and its contents were sold. But it has survived as a museum, although it's had very many different stages in its life. And it was only in the last um, 10 years or so that it's been fully restored. And there's been a long project to take it back to the way it was um, when Leighton died, when, when Leighton left it. It's been, it's far been in its final stages of closure over the last few months, um, its final conservation, and it will reopen early next year. And I hope that my words today will inspire you to visit it. Thank you.